And as Travis mentioned, we do have Senator Denise Batters right here. She is in Ottawa. Senator, thank you for speaking with us. I want to start. Uh, you. Do you want Erin O'Toole out as leader of the federal Conservative Party? That is really a question that I think our party members should have their say on. But what, what is your position? Do you want him out? I think I've indicated pretty clearly that my personal position is that I that I believe that uh, Aaron O'Toole lost a trust election election to Justin Trudeau because Canadian voters did not trust him. And uh, I think that there were many reasons that under after this particular election, we need to look at it. Um, a difference in that, but that's not up to me. That is up to our party members. And in the normal course of events, our party members would get to have that say within about six months after an election. That's what happened when Mr. Harper lost the 2004 election. That's what happened. That's what would have happened with Mr. Scheer after the 2019 election. Um, however, this particular leadership review currently would not happen for two years. And I'm simply bringing this petition forward to allow the members to have an expedited leadership confidence vote if they choose to, to take that option. And that would happen in about six months or less rather than the two years that would happen right now. Now, in your video, you have a laundry list of complaints about Mr. O'Toole. Are you not basically handing the Liberals an attack ad? No, not at all. Um, and I think that what we need to make sure to do is to put this matter to rest. There have been concerns that have been raised that I've heard on the doorsteps all over Regina during the last election that my caucus colleagues have heard at their doorsteps of their constituents all across Canada in writings um, in many different regions across Canada. So what we need to do is have a have our members have their say, and not just on the continued leadership of Mr. O'Toole, but probably more importantly, um, is the direction, the future direction of our party. On election night, Mr. O'Toole said that our members needed to have the courage to change. So it sounds like he's intending on more change happening, which after an election where, first of all, he ran in the leadership as a true blue conservative and then flipped 180 degrees on many of those core policies that the Conservative Party has long had in their particular policy platform. Um, so the members need to have a say on potential future change that the party might have rather than waiting for two years to have a say on any of those core conservative principles. And uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a centrist at heart. I was from the PC side of the equation initially in this party. And uh, so I absolutely am not averse to centrist policies, but those have to be presented with integrity and consistency and the support and buy-in of members. And that is not what has happened so far under Mr. O'Toole's leadership. You say that when conservatives are divided, liberals win. Are you not stoking divisions within your own party by publicly making this move? I don't think so, and I really hope not to be able to not to be doing that. What I'm really trying to do is ensure that our members um, have a voice in this. It is the normal course of events that our members would have this type of a leadership review confidence vote within about six months, and uh, that is what the members have been telling me. Members from across the country, EDA board um, members, members, donors, volunteers, most of all, and caucus members as well. So that's what I'm trying to give them that effective channel to make that happen if they choose to. I mean, perhaps people will disagree. And if the members disagree and they want to continue with Mr. O'Toole's leadership and the continued future direction of the party going in a different direction, then that's fine. But that is what the members need to have a say on. But are you not undermining the leader? How, how can you say that that doesn't uh, create divisions when there are members of caucus that do support him and, and you say that's not your goal, but you, you, you're going up behind him sort of at the back of the knees and trying to take him out? Well, I don't think so, being as everything that I produced this uh, publicly today and uh, everything that I said about Mr. O'Toole in the video, I have said directly to him. Um, Michelle Rempel Garner, the conservative natural resources critic, says she is profoundly disappointed in your decision. She accuses you of stealing the spotlight and that your party can't win as long as there is an open public war going on. She wants you to get rid of the petition. Will you? No, um, I've been hearing from too many uh, party members across the country former MPs, caucus members, and most importantly, party members from coast to coast. I value um, the work that Michelle Rempel Garner does for her region, my region as well, um, and, uh, and for our party. But uh, I disagree with her on this, but I certainly value her contribution. And that's what I'm really just trying to do is provide our members. They've told me they want this voice. 
um, you know, it, it may well turn out that uh, the majority of members do not choose to do this, but I think that it's best for everyone to just put this to rest. These, these types of discussions have been going on for weeks now after this election, so it's time that the members have a say. They're really kind of the bosses of the Conservative Party when it comes down to it. There was a statement put out by uh, Rob Batherson, a Conservative Party president. He says uh, that what you've put forward does not adhere to the party's constitution. He says your petition is not in order and it does not adhere to several sections of that document. Can you actually achieve your goal through this route? Or is this about sowing chaos around Aaron O'Toole? Not at all. Um, in fact, I, I saw Mr. Batherson's response just shortly before doing this interview, so I haven't had a considered chance to look at it in detail. However, my my initial reaction is that what Mr. Batherson is contending that I'm trying to initiate a leadership selection process by my petition is absolutely not the case. Um, it's very clearly stated that all I'm trying to do is to give the members a say by having the party conduct a referendum where the members can decide whether they want to have a confidence vote for the leadership earlier than it would have happened at six month mark rather than two year mark. And there's nothing in the constitution that prevents any particular um, matter from being put to the members. The, the sections that Mr. Batherson was quoted are directly dealing with leadership selection process. And that is not what I'm trying to initiate here at all. I, all I want is for the members to get a say in, in such an important matter of our party, um, not only of the leadership, but really of the future direction of the party when Mr. O'Toole has um, taken the party in such a dramatic reversal of uh, direction. The members need to have a say in that. Our last policy convention was in March. That was one month before Aaron O'Toole did the 180 degree flip flop on the carbon tax. So the members deserve to have a say on such important matters that are really core conservative principles because power without principles is meaningless. Power without principles is the current Trudeau government. Um, I want to ask you one last question here. We've run out of time, but Aaron O'Toole has been leader for just over a year now. Andrew Scheer uh, was removed as leader not long after he lost the election. How are Canadians supposed to get to know a leader and build momentum if the party keeps eating its own? Well, the normal course of uh, these types of leadership review votes is actually after an election loss happens. Andrew Scheer would have faced such a such a leadership review vote had he chosen actually not to step down as leader. And that would have happened within six months of, uh, of that particular election loss. Same thing here, um, just the same thing as Mr. Harper in 2004. So um, yes, the voters did have a chance to get to know Aaron O'Toole in the, in the 2021 campaign. And their verdict appears to me to be that they did not trust him. All right, Senator Batters, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much. Appreciate being on the show. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.